Hey, we're back on Get Down to Business, the show all about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. Get on my website, shalomkline.com. And I'm thrilled to be joined by my friend and returning guest, Albert Ferguson. Good evening, Albert. Welcome to the program. Hi there, Shalom. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, Albert, um, we have had you on in the past, but tonight we are talking about something really, really, really interesting and a really interesting company. And we're talking about medical augmented intelligence. Um, Albert, first, let's talk about the... uh, about the company, and I'd love to cover how technology can optimize the learning process. We'll get there in a moment. Tell us a little bit about MAI, Medical Augmented Intelligence. Absolutely. Well, this is a brainchild of uh, founder Sam Jang, and essentially his thought was that he wanted to come up with a more robust and engaging way to teach things that you know our clinicians need in order to serve us better. So we're talking about medical doctors, chiropractors, acupuncturists, and so he's using virtual reality in order to teach people anatomy and acupuncture. That's fascinating. So um, the company is uh, is based where? Our company is based in Taiwan. Wow. So uh, in yes, fact, but, that yeah, alone is... all over the world. Absolutely. So the uh, my understanding is that MAI, again, Medical Augmented Intelligence, uh, has partnerships on both sides of the Atlantic, um, which is helping medical students reach their learning objectives and ultimately provide better service to patients. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of that. How is that happening? Sure. Well, it's very exciting. I mean, what we want to think about is, you know, what does a classroom of the future look like, right? The classroom of the future looks like something where students go, they prepare, and then when they come to class, the teacher or the instructor has an idea of what those t- students need so he or she can relate to them. Uh, in a way that's more than just regurgitated. Uh, And so what this does is it allows students to engage with material. Instead of looking at a two-dimensional book that explains what a skeleton looks like, they can actually take and rotate different parts of a skeleton. They can add on body systems like the lymphatic system or the circulatory system. Uh, They can add on the nervous system, the muscular system, right? They can see how things overlap and how they integrate. And then ultimately, you know, it's such a, a process where the teachers actually can help understand where students are lacking in understanding based on testing and feedback and the like, so that when students are with instructors in class, they can spend their time doing what's most valuable, which is interacting, as opposed to simply regurgitating. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, on the website uh, for MAI, uh, there's some fascinating pictures where you see students, as you said, uh, interacting um, in a whole different way, in a way that perhaps has never been imagined in the past. And of course, we'll share that website uh, with our listeners in just a uh, in just a couple of minutes. So, the technology is really optimizing the learning process. In particular, we're talking about medical students. But can that same process, do you believe, Albert, uh, apply uh, to other types of learning as well? Oh, absolutely. I think that you know the concept of, of the way things progress. Uh, is it that every technology should be used for that which it is most useful. And uh, when you think about an instructor and a human interacting, the teacher, the student, um, it's their interaction that is most valuable. You know, to have a teacher sit and spend, you know, 45 minutes of a 50-minute lecture speaking about something that was read in the book, that's really not as helpful as coming to a lesson, understanding what people need help with, or, you know, putting up a five-minute video that shows in exquisite detail, you know, how different body systems of the body link and then, you know, probing the students and making sure, you know, that they have the necessary understanding to apply what they've learned in the field. Sure. And, and so I believe that is something that, that can apply across all of education. Absolutely. So, Albert, um, who is using uh, this technology? I know the company, as you said, uh, based in Taiwan, but uh, partnerships on both sides of the Atlantic, which is exciting. Um, but tell me uh, a little bit about sort of the current users and uh, perhaps we could touch on who should be using uh, this uh, technology and the software. Absolutely. Well, you know, we're a little tight-lipped about some of our customers, but I can say as a huge national government, uh, we went through a large bidding process and we won. Uh, and so one of their largest universities is using us for a couple of years before we begin a, a nationwide rollout because they were particularly uh, interested in what they saw uh, on a National Geographic feature on us. Um, back here in the States, we have some very – sort of high-profile clients in the south, uh, also in the, the northeast, working on some on the west coast as well, and here uh, centrally in Chicago. Um, what's, what's really fascinating is the way things tend to be moving is, you know, in addition to being able to set up labs that students can use, we're also working to create videos um, uh, that we can, you know, create animation 
very easily, very quickly, and very affordably. A lot of people don't really understand that, you know, in order to generate, let's say, a, a five-second CGI image, that it's not something that's like a snapshot that's taken, something that could take 160 hours or 1,600 hours, pardon me, uh, of time from the various people who are responsible for the lighting and the tracking and the animation and, the com you know, the comp compositioning, right? So, you know, this is something that, you know, we're getting to students and we're getting to um, these, you know, various people around, you know, the world and the various places where we're working, you know, so they have something that's accessible, it's quick, and it's something that's duplicable, that they can make sure that it's consistent, you know, throughout their various classes and uh, for, you know, different student bodies. Absolutely. So uh, the company is called uh, Medical Augmented Intelligence. Um, it's fascinating, uh, the advancement. And, uh, Albert, we're going to squeeze in a quick break, and we're going to continue the conversation with you uh, right after the break. But I'm curious, um, in the few moments that we have remaining, why has it taken so long uh, for this sort of new approach in learning? It's a very good question. Uh, it's a very old system, the education system. Uh, and I can say that teachers are some of the hardest working individuals uh, anywhere. Um, and it's always very difficult to change and to adapt. And so it's really a question of saying, what is the single best way to go about this process? And then looking at a process that's somewhat different sure. from, you know, a process as it exists. Well, Albert, we'll so continue, we'll continue that in just a moment. Got to squeeze in a quick break and we'll continue the conversation with Albert Ferguson in just a moment. That's MyPillow.com, promo code Amy. Back on Get Down to Business, and once again, I'm chatting with Albert Ferguson. We are chatting about MAI, and for all of you listeners that don't remember, that is Medical Augmented Intelligence. Um, Albert, you were just explaining how there's been a slow uh, adapting process to uh, to a new style in learning. Um, had to cut you off for the break, but uh, let's go back to that. Why has it taken so long for um, for institutions of higher education uh, to adapt to the new technology and, and sort of new approaches in learning. And it can be difficult because, uh, you know, technology has evolved so fast and we're looking at something that's steeped in tradition. Uh, and so it's very difficult when you have a technology, what's going to be the technology that pops up in two years and five years and seven years, uh, which, you know, can sort of unseat whatever the current technology is and then have to cause an entire rewrite and redevelopment. And so I think people are wary of taking a change, but they're not exactly sure where it's going to lead. Um, I can say one thing that's very exciting is that, uh, you know, BodyMap, which is our signature product, you know, where we're working with, you know, anatomy and virtual reality and three dimensions and overlaying body systems, that um, we had the really, really good fortune of, you know, working with a healthcare media group because uh, they want to help us actually create, you know, medical education TV programs using the BodyMap. And so the hope is that when we do that, you know, some of the educational institutions will see some of the value of this. They'll understand that, hey, you know, if we have online programs and we actually don't have students who are in class interacting with instructors on a regular basis, maybe it's time for us to look for something new. So, uh, you know, when it comes to Target and a lot of incredible, you know, fascinating marketers, they know that you know, the best time to look for somebody is when they're entering a life change, right? You're graduating from college, you're just getting married, you're moving to a new town. And in this case, as Schools and institutions look to go online. They look for new solutions. That's when their minds are open. What's the best way to do this? And our hope is we show them, hey, look, this is something that you can do not only online, but you can then integrate it into the classroom, and we're hoping they'll be able to see the benefit uh, is, you know, in both places. Sure, and rarely is there a true win-win, um, but this sounds like a, a win-win, a win for students, a win for patients, because as we talked about right now, uh, mostly we're dealing with uh, medical students and this is actually providing a better sort of better experience, better service to the uh, to the end users, the patients. But ultimately, it's uh, it's a win as well for the institution uh, of learning as well. So that's exciting. So, Albert, you were just talking a little bit about uh, I believe it's called a body map. Um, are there other uh, products? Um, tell us a little bit about those. We do. Uh, thank you for asking. So body map is our anatomy product. We also have something called uh, AccuMap, which is an acupuncture product, and then we have something called Digital Twin, which is fascinating. It actually allows you to make a 3D image rendering from a PET scan or an MRI that can be manipulated in the same way you can manipulate our avatar. So we think sometime in the future when everybody has an electronic medical record, uh, that if people have, you know, well scans, that you know that, you know, a person is on their way to the hospital with a certain type of injury, that their surgeon will be able to look at their body scan 
and see if there are any, you know, sort of particular abnormalities, uh, you know, relative to their anatomy or anything that's going on with them individually that might preclude certain ways of entry or might in any way affect the surgery. So we find that to be very, very exciting. That is certainly very exciting. Lots of uh, lots of new technology uh, being developed um, out of Taiwan, but with partnerships uh, all over the world, which is exciting. And this is changing how people learn as well as how people are treated. And that is very, very exciting indeed. So the company is called Medical Augmented Intelligence. Albert Ferguson, um, can you tell us um, what you expect to see um, over the next uh, let's say five years. What's uh, what is the growth of the, of the company look like? Uh, you know, I think it's uh, sky's the limit. I think we're we're doing very well with some of the, the national projects that we have. As again, as I said, uh, this uh, healthcare media company that has brought us on is also our investor in our current round, which is wonderful. Uh, I think what happens is once we sort of start introducing schools who are interested in developing online programs to what it is we can do that they'll slowly be able to integrate that into their sort of their brick and mortar institutions uh, in the sense that, you know, we'll be able to sort of become fully integrated to curriculums going forward. Uh, that's, uh, that's huge indeed. So, Albert, um, we're quickly running out of time, and I want to make sure that our listeners know where they can learn more about this exciting technology, exciting, or frankly, revolution in the uh, in the world of uh, of learning and, uh, as the company name is, uh, Medical Augmented Intelligence. Albert, where can people learn more? They can find us at mai.ai online. That's mai.ai. And if somebody wants to uh, sort of schedule a, uh, a, a demo and a, uh, and a trial through this process, are they able to, uh, to schedule that through the website as well? Yes, they can go onto the website and they can contact our team and we'll you know, send out a representative to make sure we can uh, schedule a follow-up meeting. Well, it's exciting. Uh, Albert, this is the program all about uh, business, jobs, entrepreneurship, and this is exciting um, for really all three of those categories. So congratulations on all of your success thus far, and we'll certainly look forward to following the progress here and get down to business. Thanks for joining me this evening. Thank you much. Absolutely. Always a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. Well, that was Albert Ferguson from Medical Augmented Intelligence. You can find out um, more online, mai.ai. Um, and uh, really fascinating information uh, regarding their three products, BodyMap, AccuMap, and DigiTwin, um, that will revolutionize. Um, so coming up after the break, I'm going to be chatting some more uh, about tips, advice, information for all of you business owners out there. We, uh, we shared uh, a couple of weeks ago that there were only 77 working days until the end of the year. That's pretty staggering, and, uh, and those days are rapidly dwindling as time goes on. Um, so now is the time to make sure that you are being as productive as possible uh, in your company. Uh, and we're going to share some tips, advice, and information that you could put to use as you uh, work through. Now we're in the 60s. There's only 60-something days left before the end of the 2019 business year. Uh, it's rapidly approaching. Uh, I always share lots of advice on my website and social media. You can find all of that on my website, shalomkline.com. Uh, you don't want to miss the tips. End of the program is coming up in just a few minutes. Did you miss the open enrollment? 